Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to my channel or just for watching this video. So as you may or may not know, the reason I did this video is because I, I looked on social media and I couldn't find a prepware study guide. So I decided to make my own. So that said, um, we're right now on materials and processes, 95 questions. And if at any point you guys feel that I'm going too fast, uh, you guys can always pause it, or if I'm going too slow, you guys can always fast forward. Um, so, let's get started, and I will have my assistant read for me. This was so I don't have to read, and if you guys don't want to read, you guys could just hear it and just try to answer with the best uh, answer you guys possibly have. Okay, let's get started. Materials and processes, 95 questions, enlist 12 items. Question 1 of 95. In the four-digit aluminum index system number 2024, the first digit indicates. Not selected, the major alloying element, radio button. Selected. EXPL button. In the four-digit numbering system for identifying aluminum alloys, the first digit shows the major alloy used with the aluminum. The 1000 series is commercially pure aluminum. The 2000 series has copper as the main alloy. The 3000 series has manganese as the main alloy. The 4000 series has silicon as the main alloy. The 5000 series has magnesium as the main alloy. The 6000 series has magnesium and silicon in it. The 7000 series has zinc as the main alloy. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 2 of 95. To detect a minute crack using dye penetrant inspection usually requires. Not selected, a longer than normal penetrating time, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The amount of penetrant that can enter a small crack is determined by both the length of time the penetrant is allowed to remain on the surface and the temperature of the part. When looking for very small cracks, the part can be heated, but not enough to cause the penetrant to evaporate from the surface, and the penetrant can be allowed to stay on the surface for a longer than normal time before it is washed off. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 3 of 95. Which of the following defects are not acceptable for metal lines? 1. Cracked flare. 2. Seams. 3. Dents in the heel of a bend less than 20% of the diameter. 4. Scratches, nicks on the inside of a bend less than 10% of wall thickness. 5. Dents in straight section that are 20% of tube diameter. <laughs> Not selected, 1, 2, 3, and 5, radio button. Selected. EXPL. 1. A cracked flare is cause for rejection of a metal fluid line. 2. Metal fluid lines must be made of seamless tubing. 3. A dent in the heel of a bend of more than 10% of the tube diameter is not acceptable. 4. Scratches, nicks less than 10% of the wall thickness of the tube are repairable if they are not in the heel of the bend. 5. A dent of more than 20% of the tube diameter is not acceptable. Okay. Next button. Question 4 of 95. Refer to figure 48. What does the micrometer read? View figures button. Not selected, 0 0.3004, radio, selected, EXPL, but the thimble has been screwed out slightly more than 0 0.300 inch, the line by the 3 is just barely visible. The thimble has rotated just a bit beyond the 0 line on the sleeve. The vernier line on the barrel for 4 is lined up with one of the marks on the thimble, and this means that we add 0 0.0004 inch to the other numbers we have. The total reading of this vernier micrometer is 0 0.300 plus 0 0.0004 equals 0 0.3004 inch. Okay, but Next. Question 5 of 95. Which of the following occurs when a mechanical force is repeatedly applied to most metals at room temperature, such as rolling, hammering, or bending? 1. The metals become artificially aged. 2. 
the metals become stress corrosion cracked. 3. The metals become cold worked, strain or work hardened. Not selected. 3. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. When a mechanical force such as rolling, hammering, or bending is repeatedly applied to most metals at room temperature, the metals become cold worked, strain, or work hardened. They become so hard and brittle that they break. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 6 of A fiber type, self-locking nut must never be used on an aircraft if the bolt is Not selected, subject to rotation, radio button Selected EXPL Fiber type, self-locking nuts depend upon the fiber insert in the end of the nut gripping the bolt threads tight enough to prevent the nut backing off since there is no mechanical lock between the nut and the bolt, the FAA recommends that a fiber-type self-locking nut not be used in any installation in which the fastener is subject to rotation. Okay. Next. Question 7 of 95. What two types of indicating mediums are available for magnetic particle inspection? Not selected, wet and dry process materials, rate. Selected. EXPL. The magnetic medium used for magnetic particle inspection can be applied either as a dry oxide powder dusted over the surface or, as is more commonly done, suspended in a light oil such as kerosene and pumped over the surface. The iron oxide used as the indicating medium is often treated with a fluorescent dye that causes it to glow with a green light when an ultraviolet light black light is shown on it. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 8 of 95. Refer to figure 47. What is the measurement reading on the Bernier caliper scale? View figures button. View figures. Not selected, 1.436 inches, radio button. Not selected, 1.411 inches, re Selected. Not selected, 1.436 inches, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The zero on the Bernier scale is beyond the one. This shows the measurement is more than one inch. It is beyond the four. This shows it is more than 1.4 inch. It is beyond the first 0 0.025 mark on the bar. This shows that it is more than 1.425 inch. The 11 line on the Bernier scale lines up with one of the marks on the bar. This 0 0.011 is added to the reading we have. The total reading is 1.425 plus 0 0.011 equals 1.436 inches. Okay. Next. Question 9 of 95. The clearance between the piston rings and the ring lands is measured with a Not selected, micrometer caliper, radio button. Selected. Not selected, thickness gauge, radio button. Selected. EXPL, button. A thickness gauge, a feeler gauge, is used to measure the side clearance of a piston ring in its ring groove. The ring is installed in the groove. Its outside edge is held flush with the side of the piston. A feeler gauge is placed between the side of the piston ring and the ring land, the edge of the ring groove to measure the amount of clearance between the ring and the groove. Reference, AMTP Chapter 9. Okay. Next. Question 10 of 95. What non-destructive testing method requires little or no part preparation, is used to detect surface or near-surface defects in most metals, and may also be used to separate metals or alloys in their heat treat conditions? Not selected, ultrasonic inspection, radio button. Selected. Not selected, eddy current inspection, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Eddy current inspection requires relatively little preparation of the part being inspected. It induces a magnetic field into the part which causes eddy currents to flow. Variations in the magnitude of the eddy currents affect this magnetic field, and when it is analyzed electronically, it gives information regarding such structural characteristics as flaws, discontinuities, thickness, and alloy or heat treat condition of the material. Eddy current inspection is used to locate defects both on the surface and below the surface. Okay. Next. Question 11 of 95. Which tool is used to find the center of a shaft or other cylindrical work? 
not selected combination set radio button tap selected expl the center of a shaft or other the center of a shaft or other circle can be found with the center head of a combination set a combination set consists of a steel scale that has three heads that can be moved to any position on the scale and locked in place the three heads are a stock head that measures 90 degrees and 45 degrees angles, a protractor head that can measure any angle between the head and the blade, and the center head that uses one side of the blade as the bisector of a 90 degree angle. The center head is placed against the circumference of the circle and a diameter is drawn along the edge of the blade. The head is moved about a quarter of the way around the circle and another diameter is drawn. The two diameters cross in the center of the circle. Reference AMTG Chapter 7 Okay. Next button. Question 12 of 95. What tool is generally used to calibrate a micrometer or check its accuracy? Not selected. Machinist scale. Radio button. Selected. Not selected. Dial indicator. Radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected. Gauge block. Radio button. Selected. EXP. Micrometer calipers are precision measuring instruments. They are checked for accuracy by using gauge blocks. A 0 to 1 inch micrometer is checked with the thimble screwed down against the anvil. No gauge block is used. A 1 to 2 inch micrometer uses a 1 inch gauge block. A 2 to 3 inch micrometer uses a 2 inch gauge block. Okay. Next. Which tool? Question 13 of 95. Which tool? Question 13 of which tool is used to measure the clearance between a surface plate and a relatively narrow surface being checked for flatness? Not selected, dial indicator, radio button. Not selected, thickness gauge, radio button. Selected, EXPL button. A part is checked for flatness by putting it on a surface plate and sliding a thickness gauge, a feeler gauge between the part and the surface plate. The thickness of the feeler gauge that will slip between the part and the surface plate is the amount the part lacks being flat. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 14 of 95. The aluminum code number 1100 identifies what type of aluminum? Not selected, 99% commercially pure aluminum, radio. Selected. EXPL. Aluminum identified by the code number 1100 is 99% commercially pure aluminum. Okay. Next button. Question 15 of 95. When the specific torque value for nuts is not given, where can the recommended torque value be found? Not selected. AC 43.131B. Radio. Selected. EXPL. A list of recommended torque values for nut bolt combinations without lubrication are found in AC 43.131B on page 7 to 9. Okay. Next. Question 16 of 95. Aircraft bolts with a cross or asterisk marked on the bolt head are Not selected, close tolerance bolts, radio button. Selected. Not selected, standard steel bolts, radio button. Selected. EXPL. A cross or asterisk on the head of a bolt identifies it as a standard and bolt made of nickel alloy steel. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 17 of 95. Which heat treating operation would be performed when the surface of the metal is changed chemically by introducing a high carbide or nitride content? Not selected, case hardening, radio button. Selected. EXPL. In case hardening, the surface of the metal is changed chemically by introducing a high carbide or nitride content. The core is unaffected chemically. When heat treated, the surface responds to hardening while the core remains tough. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 18 of 95. Which material cannot be heat treated repeatedly without harmful effects? Not selected. Clad aluminum alloy. Radio Selected. EXPL. Clad aluminum alloy sheets have a core of high strength aluminum alloy onto whose surface have been rolled a thin layer of pure aluminum. When clad sheets are heated in the process of heat treatment, some of the pure aluminum diffuses into the core alloy and weakens the sheet. 
The manufacturer of the aluminum specifies the number of times clad sheets can be heat treated. Typically, they allow the sheet to be heat treated only one to three times. Okay. Next. Question 19 of 95. If it is necessary to accurately measure the diameter of a hole approximately one quarter inch in diameter, the mechanic should use a not selected, small hole gauge and determine the size of the hole by taking a micrometer reading of the ball end of the gauge, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The diameter of a small hole is measured by placing a ball type small hole gauge in the hole and expanding it until its outside diameter is exactly the same size as the inside diameter of the hole. Remove the small hole gauge from the hole and measure its outside diameter with a micrometer caliper. Okay. Next. Question 20 of 95. Which of the following is a main determinant of the dwell time to use when conducting a dye or fluorescent penetrant inspection? Not selected, the size and shape of the discontinuities being looked for, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The dwell time, the time the penetrant is allowed to remain on the surface, is determined by the size and shape of the discontinuity being looked for. Okay. Next button. Question 21 of 95. What aluminum alloy designations indicate that the metal has received no hardening or tempering treatment? Not selected, 3003F, radio button. Selected, EXP. In the temper designations used with aluminum alloy, these letters have the following meanings. F means, as fabricated. There has been no control over its temper. H36 means the metal is non-heat treatable, but it has been strain hardened and stabilized to its three quarters hard state. O means the metal has been annealed. Reference, okay, but. Next. Question 22 of 95. Aircraft bolts are usually manufactured with a Not selected, class 3 fit for the threads, radio button. Selected, EXPL. A class 1 fit is a loose fit. This is used for coarse thread stove bolts and square nuts. A class 2 fit is a free fit. It is used on some machine screws. A class 3 fit is a medium fit. It is used on almost all standard aircraft bolts. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 23 of 95. Which of the following materials may be inspected using the magnetic particle inspection method? 1. Magnesium alloys. 2. Aluminum alloys. 3. Iron alloys. 4. Copper alloys. 5. Zinc alloys. Which of the... Not selected. 3. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. In order for a part to be inspected by the magnetic particle method, it must be magnetizable. The only magnetizable metals listed in the alternatives are iron alloys. Okay. Next. Question 24 of 95. Which condition indicates a part has cooled too quickly after being welded? Not selected. Cracking adjacent to the weld. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. Heat causes metal to expand. Cooling causes it to contract. If a metal is cooled too quickly after it is welded, it will contract unevenly and stresses will remain in the metal. These stresses produce cracks adjacent to the weld. Reference, AMTSTRUC Chapter 2. Okay. Next. Question 25 of 95. What may be used to check the stem on a poppet type valve for stretch? Not selected, micrometer, radio button. Tap. Selected. EXPL. The stem of a poppet valve is checked for stretch by using a vernier micrometer caliper to measure the stem diameter in the center of the stem and at the spring end. If the center diameter is less than the diameter at the spring end, the valve stem has been stretched. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 26 of 95. One way a part may be demagnetized after magnetic particle inspection is by Not selected, slowly moving the part out of an AC magnetic field of sufficient strength, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. EXPL. A steel part is magnetized by holding it in a strong, steady magnetic field that aligns all of the magnetic domains in the material. 
It is demagnetized by placing it in an AC magnetic field that continually reverses its polarity. This causes the domains to continually reverse their direction. As the domains are reversing, the part is slowly moved from the field so the domains remain in a disoriented state when the demagnetizing force is removed. Okay. Next. Question 27 of 95. Holes in a few projecting globules are found in a weld. What action should be taken? Not selected, remove all the old weld, and rule the joint, radio button. Selected. EXPL, button. Blow holes in projecting globules are indications of a poor weld. All of the old weld beads should be removed and the material ruled. Reference, AC 43.131B. Okay, but... Next. Question 28 of 95. What metal has special short time heat properties and is used in the construction of aircraft firewalls? Not selected, titanium alloy, radium. Selected. EXPL, but... Titanium has some merit for short time exposure up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit where strength is not important. Aircraft firewalls demand this requirement. Okay. Next button. Question 29 of 95. What tool is generally used to set a divider to an exact dimension? Not selected. Machinist scale. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. Dividers are not considered to be a precision measuring tool. They are set with a machinist scale. One of the points of the dividers is placed at the 1 inch mark on the scale. The other point is moved out until it touches the mark for the distance you want between the points. Okay. Next. Question 30 of 95. Which tool can be used to measure the alignment of a rotor shaft or the plane of rotation of a disc? Not selected. Dial indicator. Selected. EXPL. A dial indicator is used to measure the alignment of a rotor shaft. The dial indicator is clamped to the structure, the contact finger is placed against the surface of the shaft, and the indicator is zeroed. The shaft is rotated and the dial indicator measures the amount the shaft is out of alignment. The plane of rotation of a disc may also be measured with a dial indicator. Reference that. Okay. Next. Question 31 of 95. Which type crack can be detected by magnetic particle inspection using either circular or longitudinal magnetization? Not selected, 45 degrees, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. EXPL. Longitudinal magnetization produces a magnetic field that extends lengthwise in the material. It is used to detect faults that extend across the part perpendicular to the lines of magnetic flux. Circular magnetization produces a magnetic field that extends across the material. It can detect faults that are oriented along the length of the part. Either type of magnetization can detect a fault that runs at 45 degrees to the length of the part. Okay. Next button. Question 32 of 95. What defects will be detected by magnetizing a part using continuous longitudinal magnetization with a cable? Not selected, defects parallel to the long axis of the part, radio button. Selected. Not selected, defects parallel to the concentric circles of magnetic force within the part, radio button. Tap to Selected. Not selected, defects perpendicular to the long axis of the part, radio button. Selected. EXPL. A part magnetized longitudinally by current flowing through a cable wrapped around it will show up defects that are perpendicular, at right angles, to the long axis of the part. Okay. Next. Question 33 of 95. Self-locking nuts may be used on aircraft provided that. Not selected. The bolt or nut are not subject to rotation. Selected. EXPL. Self-locking nuts are used on aircraft to provide tight connections which will not shake loose under severe vibration. Do not use self-locking nuts at joints that subject either the nut or bolt to rotation. Okay, button. Next. Question 34 of 95. What method of magnetic particle inspection is used most often to inspect aircraft parts for invisible cracks and other defects? Not selected. Continuous. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. 
In the continuous method of magnetic particle inspection is used for most aircraft parts because it provides the strongest magnetic field to attract the oxide from the fluid. In the continuous method of magnetic particle inspection, the part is either placed between the heads of the magnetizing machine or held inside the solenoid coil. Magnetizing current flows while the fluid is pumped over the part. In the residual method of magnetic particle inspection, used for some smaller parts, the parts are magnetized and the magnetizing current is shut off. Only residual magnetism is left in the part to attract the oxide. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 35 of 95. The testing medium that is generally used in magnetic particle inspection utilizes a ferromagnetic material that has not selected, high permeability and high retentivity, radio button. Selected. Not selected, high permeability and low retentivity, rate selected, EXPL. The testing medium used to indicate the presence of a fault in magnetic particle inspection is a finely ground iron oxide that has a high permeability and low retentivity, and is non-toxic. It is usually suspended in a light oil such as kerosene. Okay. Next button. Question 36 of 95. Why is it considered good practice to normalize a part after welding? Not selected, to relieve internal stresses developed within the base metal, radio button. Selected. EXPL. When a part is welded, it has expanded and been fused to another part. When it cools, stresses inside it try to deform it. After a part has been welded, it should be normalized by heating it to a temperature above its critical temperature and allowed to cool in still air. This heating relieves the stresses in the metal, and the part is not so likely to crack in service. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 37 of 95. Refer to Figure 42. Which of the bolt head code markings shown identifies an corrosion-resistant steel bolt? U Few figures. Not selected, 3, radio button. Selected. EXP. The cross on the head of a bolt identifies it as a standard and bolt made of nickel alloy steel. The cross inside a triangle identifies the bolt as a NOS close tolerance bolt. The single dash on the head of a bolt identifies it as a standard bolt made of corrosion resistant steel. Reference, AC 43.131B. Okay. Next. Question 38 of 95. Where is an enclevis bolt used in an airplane? Not selected, only for shear load applications, radio button. Tap. Selected. EXPL. A clevis bolt should be used only where the load to which the bolt is applied is a shear load. A clevis bolt is not designed to take any type of tensile load. The threaded portion of a clevis bolt is short and there is a groove between the threads and the shank. The head of a clevis bolt has a screwdriver slot rather than flats for the use of a wrench. Okay. Next. Question 39 of 95. Which of these non-destructive testing methods is suitable for the inspection of most metals, plastics, and ceramics for surface and subsurface defects? Not selected. Ultrasonic inspection. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. Ultrasonic inspection uses high-frequency sound waves to detect faults in a material. It can be used on a wide variety of materials such as ferrous and non-ferrous metals, plastics and ceramics. It can detect subsurface as well as surface defects. Okay. Next. Question 40 of 95. The pattern for an inclusion is a magnetic particle buildup forming. Not selected. Parallel lines. Rate. Select. EXPL. Inclusions are impurities trapped inside a piece of metal when it was cast. When the part is inspected by magnetic particle inspection, the inclusion does not show up as a clearly defined fault but the indication is fuzzy. Rather than sharply defined poles, there are several sets of poles that cause the oxide to form in a series of parallel lines. Reference, AMTP Chapter 9. Okay. Next. Question 41 of 95. Normalizing is a process of heat treating. Not selected, iron base metals only, radio button. Tap to toggle. 
Selected. EXPL. Normalizing is a heat treating process in which an iron base metal is heated to a temperature above its critical temperature and allowed to cool in still air. Normalizing reduces the stresses in the metal that were put there by the fabrication process. Okay. Next. Question 42 of 95. Under magnetic particle inspection, a part will be identified as having a fatigue crack under which condition? Not selected, the discontinuity pattern is straight, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. Not selected, the discontinuity is found in a highly stressed area of the part, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Fatigue cracks usually show up in areas that have been subjected to high concentrations of stresses. They are likely to form where the cross-sectional area of the part changes sharply. Reference, AMTP Chapter 9. Okay. Next. Question 43 of 95. How is the locking feature of the fiber type lock nut obtained? Not selected, by the use of an unthreaded fiber locking insert, radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected, by making the threads in the fiber insert slightly smaller than those in the load carrying section, radio button. Selected. Not select. Selected. EXPL. A fiber type lock nut is held firmly on the threads of a bolt by pressure caused by an unthreaded fiber insert locked into a recess in the end of the nut. When the bolt is screwed through the nut, it forces its way through the unthreaded fiber. The fiber grips the threads and applies a downward force between the threads in the nut and those on the bolt. This force prevents the nut vibrating loose. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 44 of 95. How can the dimensional inspection of a bearing in a rocker arm be accomplished? Not selected, depth gauge and micrometer, radio button. Not selected, telescopic gauge and micrometer, radio. Selected. EXPL. A dimensional inspection of a bearing in a rocker arm can be made by expanding a telescopic gauge inside the bushing, bearing, until its length is exactly the same as the inside diameter of the bushing. Remove the gauge and measure it with a vernier micrometer caliper. Measure the rocker arm shaft with the same vernier micrometer caliper. The difference between the diameter of the shaft and that of the hole is the fit of the shaft in its bushing. Ref okay. Next. Question 45 of 95. Liquid penetrant inspection methods may be used on which of the following? 1. Porous plastics. 2. Ferrous metals. 3. Non-ferrous metals. 4. Smooth primer sealed wood. 5. Non-ferrous plastics. Not selected. 2, 3, 5. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. Liquid penetrant inspection methods may be used to detect faults that extend to the surface on both ferrous and non-ferrous metals and non-ferrous plastics. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 46 of 95. The twist of a connecting rod is checked by installing push-fit arbors in both ends, supported by parallel steel bars on a surface plate. Measurements are taken between the arbor and the parallel bar with a not selected thickness gauge radio button. Selected. EXPL. Connecting rod twist is measured by fitting a feeler gauge, a thickness gauge between the ends of arbors and the parallel bars. Okay. Next. Question 47 of 95. On a fillet weld, the penetration requirement includes what percentages of the base metal thickness? Not selected, 100%, radio button. Tap. Selected. Not selected, 60-80%, to 80%, radio button. Not selected, 25 to 50 percent. Selected. EXPL. A properly made fillet weld has a penetration of 25 to 50 percent of the thickness of the base metal. Okay, but. Next button. Question 48 of 95. Refer to figure 46. The measurement reading on the illustrated micrometer is. View figures, but. View figures. Not
Not selected. 0.2851. Radio button. Selected. EXPL. The thimble has been screwed out more than 0.275 inch. The third mark beyond the two is visible. The thimble has rotated just a bit more than 10 hundredths of the way around, as is shown by the line on the sleeve. It is just beyond the 10 on the thimble. This means that 0.010 is added to the 0.275 on the sleeve. The vernier line on the barrel for one is lined up with one of the marks on the thimble, and this means that we add 0.0001 inch to the two other numbers we have. The total reading of this vernier micrometer is 0.275 plus 0.010 plus 0.0001 equals 0.2851 inch. Okay. Next. Question 49 of 95. A bolt with an X inside a triangle on the head is classified as an Not selected, NOS close tolerance bolt, radio button. Selected. EXPL. A NOS or an in standard aircraft bolt has a raised cross or asterisk on its head. A NOS close tolerance bolt has a cross or an X inside a triangle on its head. An in corrosion resistant steel bolt has a single raised dash on its head. Reference, AC 43.131B. Okay. Next. Question 50 of 95. Why is steel tempered after being hardened? Not selected, to increase its strength and decrease its internal stresses, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. Not selected, to relieve its internal stresses and reduce its brittleness, radio button. Selected. EXPL, button. Steel is tempered after it is hardened to remove some of the internal stresses and make it less brittle. Tempering is done by heating it to a temperature quite a way below its critical temperature and allowing it to cool in still air. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 51 of 95. One characteristic of a good weld is that no oxide should be formed on the base metal at a distance from the weld of more than... Not selected, one half inch, radio button. Selected. EXPL, button. When making a good weld, the heat should be concentrated in the area being welded. The oxides that form on the base metal give an indication of the amount of heat put into the metal. Oxides formed for a distance of much more than one half inch from the weld show that too much heat was put into the metal. The metal may have been weakened. Reference, AC 43.131B. Okay. Next button. Question 52 of 95. The side clearances of piston rings are measured with a Not selected, thickness gauge, radio button. Selected. EXPL. A thickness gauge, a feeler gauge, is used to measure the side clearance of a piston ring in its ring groove. The ring is installed in the groove and its outside edge is held flush with the side of the piston. A feeler gauge is placed between the side of the piston ring and the edge of the ring groove to measure the amount of clearance between the ring and the groove. Reference, AMTP Chapter 9. Okay. Next. Question 53 of 95. The Society of Automotive Engineers, SAE, and the American Iron and Steel Institute use a numerical index system to identify the composition of various steels. In the number, 4130, designating chromium molybdenum steel, the first digit indicates the Not selected, basic alloying element, radio button. Selected. EXPL. In the say four-digit numbering system for identifying the composition of steel, the first two digits identify the basic alloy, and the second two digits show the percentage of carbon in hundredths of a percent. Okay. Next. Question 54 of 95. Magnetic particle inspection is used primarily to detect. Not selected, distortion, radio button. Selected. Not selected, flaws on or near the surface, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Magnetic particle inspection is used to detect flaws in ferromagnetic material on or near the surface. These flaws form north and south magnetic poles when the part is magnetized. Iron oxide suspended in a fluid pumped over the part is attracted to and held by the magnetism and it outlines the flaw. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. 
Okay. Next. Question 55 of 95. When checking an item with the magnetic particle inspection method, circular and longitudinal magnetization should be used to Not selected, ensure uniform current flow, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. Not selected, evenly magnetize the entire part, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. Not selected, reveal all possible defects, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Since longitudinal magnetization detects faults that lie across a part, and circular magnetization detects faults that lie parallel to its length, a complete inspection that will show up all possible defects requires that the part be magnetized twice, longitudinally and circularly, and given two separate inspections. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 56 of 95. Which of the following methods may be suitable to use to detect cracks open to the surface in aluminum forgings and castings? 1. Dye penetrant inspection. 2. Magnetic particle inspection. 3. Metallic ring coin tap inspection. 4. Eddy current inspection. 5. Ultrasonic inspection. 6. Visual inspection. Not selected, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, radio button. Selected. Not selected, 1, 4, 5, 6, radio button. Selected. EXPL, but. Dye penetrant, eddy current, ultrasonic, and visual inspections may be used on aluminum forgings and castings. Magnetic particle inspection can only be used on ferrous metals, and the metallic ring inspection is used to check for delaminations in bonded composite structural materials. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 57 of 95. 1. An aircraft part may be demagnetized by subjecting it to a magnetizing force from alternating current that is gradually reduced in strength. 2. An aircraft part may be demagnetized by subjecting it to a magnetizing force from direct current that is alternately reversed in direction and gradually reduced in strength. Regarding the above statements. Not selected, only number 2 is true, radio button. Selected. Not selected, both number 1 and number 2 are true, radio. Selected. EXPL. Statement 1, is true. A part is demagnetized by placing it in an AC magnetic field whose strength is gradually reduced while it continually reverses its polarity. This leaves the domains in a disoriented state when the demagnetizing force is removed. Statement 2, is also true. A DC magnetic field whose direction is continually reversed and the strength is gradually reduced may be used to demagnetize an aircraft part that has been inspected by the magnetic particle inspection method. Okay, but... Next, but... Question 58 of 95. Refer to figure 43. Identify the clevis bolt illust... View figures... View figures, navigate up. Not selected, 3, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The bolt shown in view 1 is a drilled head, hex head bolt. The bolt shown in view 2 is an eye bolt. The bolt shown in view 3 is a clevis bolt. Okay. Next. Question 59 of 95. Why should an aircraft maintenance technician be familiar with weld nomenclature? Not selected, in order to gain familiarity with the welding technique, filler material, and temperature range used, radio button. Selected. EXPL. It is extremely important to make a weld repair equal to the original weld. Identifying the kind of metal to be welded, identifying the kind of welding process used in building the part originally, and determining the best way to make welded repairs are of utmost importance. Reference, AC 43. Okay, but... Next. Question 60 of 95. A bolt with a single raised dash on the head is classified as an Not selected, and corrosion resistant steel bolt, radio button. Selected. EXPL. An and corrosion resistant steel bolt is identified by a single raised dash on its head. Okay. Next. 
Question 61 of 95. 1. In non-destructive testing, a discontinuity may be defined as an interruption in the normal physical structure or configuration of a part. 2. A discontinuity may or may not affect the usefulness of a part. Regarding the above statements. Not selected, only number 1 is true, radio button. Selected. Not selected, both number 1 and number 2 are true. Selected. EXPL. Statement 1, is true. In non-destructive testing, a discontinuity may be defined as an interruption in the normal physical structure or configuration of a part. Statement 2, is also true. A discontinuity may or may not affect the usefulness of a part. Rep. Okay. Next. Question 62 of 95. Alclad is a metal consisting of. Not selected, aluminum alloy surface layers and a pure not selected, pure aluminum surface layers on an aluminum alloy core, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Alclad is the registered trade name for an aluminum alloy sheet that has pure aluminum rolled onto its surfaces. The pure aluminum protects the alloy core from corrosion. Okay. Next. Question 63 of 95. Which statement relating to the residual magnetizing inspection method is true? Not selected, it may be used with steels which have been heat treated for stressed applications, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. EXP. In the residual method of magnetic particle inspection, the part is magnetized and removed from the magnetic field before the oxide carrying fluid is pumped over it. Steel that has a high retentivity, retains its magnetism after the magnetizing force has been removed can be inspected by the residual method. Steel that has been heat treated for stressed applications has a high retentivity and it can be inspected by the residual method. Okay. Next. Question 64 of 95. Refer to figure 49. The measurement reading on the micrometer is. View figures. View figures. Navigate up. Not selected, 0.2792, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The thimble has moved out beyond 2 tenths of an inch, 0 0.200 inch. It has moved out to a point that is beyond the third 25 thousandths of an inch mark. 0 0.075 inch. The four mark on the thimble has just passed the scale on the sleeve, 0 0.075 plus 0 0.004 inch equals 0 0.079. The two line on the vernier scale lines up with a number on the thimble. This adds 0 0.0002 inch. The total measurement is 0 0.2792 inch. Okay. Next. Question 65 of 95. In examining and evaluating a welded joint, a mechanic should be familiar with. Not selected, the welding technique, filler material, and temperature range used, radio button. Selected. Not selected, likely ambient exposure conditions and intended use of the part, along with type of weld and original part material composition, re selected. EXPL. It is important when evaluating a welded joint that you are familiar with the likely ambient conditions to which the part will be exposed, the intended use of the part, the type of weld, and the material of which the part is made. Okay. Next. Question 66 of 95. In magnetic particle inspection, a flaw that is perpendicular to the magnetic field flux lines generally causes. Not selected, a large disruption in the magnetic field, radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected, a minimal disruption in the magnetic field, rate. Selected. Not selected, a large disruption in the magnetic field, rate. Selected. EXPL. In order to locate a defect in a part by the magnetic particle inspection method, it is essential that the magnetic lines of force pass approximately perpendicular to the defect. This causes the maximum disruption of the magnetic field and forms magnetic poles which attract the indicating medium across the defect. 
Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 67 of 95. Refer to figure 45. What type weld is shown at G? You fig. Few figures, now. Not selected, lap radio button. Selected. EXPL. The two welds shown at G are lap welds. When both edges are welded as is done here, the joint is called a double lap joint. Okay. Next. Question 68 of 95. Unless otherwise specified or required, aircraft bolts should be installed so that the bolt head is not selected, upward, or in a forward direction. Selected. EXPL. An accepted rule of thumb for installing bolts in an aircraft structure is to have the bolt head up, forward, or outboard. When the bolt is installed in this way, it is least likely to fall out if the nut should ever back off. Okay. Next. Question 69 of 95. Select a characteristic of a good gas weld. Not selected, the weld should taper off smoothly into the base metal, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The bead of a gas weld that has good penetration and good fusion is uniform and straight. It has a slightly crowned surface that tapers off smoothly into the base metal. Reference, AMTSTRUC Chapter 2. Okay. Next button. Question 70 of 95. A part which is being prepared for dye penetrant inspection should be cleaned with. Not selected, a volatile petroleum-based solvent, radio button. Selected. EXPL. It is important when performing a dye penetrant inspection that the surface of the part be as clean as possible. Volatile petroleum-based solvents such as Stoddard solvent and naphtha are widely used for cleaning parts to be inspected. Reference, AC 43.131B. Okay. Next. Pause. Question 71 of 95. What is generally used in the construction of aircraft exhaust collectors, stacks, and manifolds? Not selected, stainless steel, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The material most generally used for firewalls, exhaust collectors, stacks, and manifolds on aircraft is stainless steel at least 0.015 inch thick. Mild steel, at least 0.018 inch thick and protected from corrosion, turnplate at least 0.018 inch thick, and monal at least 0.018 inch thick may also be used. Okay. Next. Question 72 of 95. The reheating of a heat-treated metal, such as with a welding torch. Not selected, has little or no effect on a metal's heat-treated characteristics, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. Not selected, can significantly alter a metal's properties in the reheated area, radio button. Selected. EXP. When a heat-treated metal is reheated with a welding torch there is no close control of the temperature and the metal's properties in the reheated area may be significantly altered. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 73 of 95. How is a clevis bolt used with a fork and cable terminal secured? Not selected, with a shear nut tightened to a snug fit but with no strain imposed on the fork and safetyed with a cotter pin, radio button. Selected. EXPL. When a clevis bolt is used to secure a fork and cable terminal, a shear castle nut should be used on the clevis bolt. The nut should be tightened until it is snug, but there must be no strain on the fork. The nut is secured to the clevis bolt with a cotter pin. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 74 of 95. A particular component is attached to the aircraft structure by the use of an aircraft bolt and a castle tension nut combination. If the cotter pin hole does not align within the recommended torque range, the acceptable practice is to not selected, change washers and try again. So, EXPL, but when tightening castle nuts on bolts, the cotter pin holes may not line up with the slots in the nuts at maximum recommended torque plus friction drag. 
If the hole and nut castellation do not align, change washers and try again. Exceeding the maximum recommended torque is not recommended. Reference, AC 43.0. Question 75 of 95. What type of corrosion may attack the grain boundaries of aluminum alloys when the heat treatment process has been improperly accomplished? Not selected, intergranular, radio button. Selected, EXPL. An aluminum alloy part is heat treated by being heated in an oven and then removed and immediately quenched in cold water. If there is a delay between the time the part is removed from the oven and the time it is quenched, the grains in the metal will grow. Because of this, there is a good probability that intergranular corrosion will develop along the boundaries of the grains within the metal. Okay. Next. Question 76 of 95. A mechanic has completed a bonded honeycomb repair using the potted compound repair technique. What non-destructive testing method is used to determine the soundness of the repair after the repair has cured? Not selected, metallic ring test, radio button. Selected, EXPL. After a bonded honeycomb repair has been made using the potted compound repair technique, the soundness of the repair can be tested by using the metallic ring test. The repaired surface is tested by tapping it with the edge of a coin. If the repair is sound, the tapping will produce a metallic ringing sound. If there is any void in the material, the tapping will produce a dull thudding sound. Okay. Next. Question 77 of 95. Identify the correct statement. Not selected, an outside micrometer is limited to measuring diameters, radio button. Not selected, dividers do not provide a reading when used as a measuring device, radio button. Selected, EXPL, but dividers do not provide a reading when they are used as a measuring device. They are used by placing their points at the locations between which the measurement is to be taken. Then the distance between the points is measured with a steel machinist scale. Okay. Next. Question 78 of 95. Which number represents the Vernier scale graduation of a micrometer? Not selected, 0. 0.0001, radio but Selected. EXPL. The Vernier scale, the series of parallel lines on the sleeve, on a Vernier micrometer caliper is used to give an indication of 1 ten thousandth of an inch, 0. 0.0001 inch, of spindle movement. Okay. Next. Question 79 of 95. Refer to figure 45. What type weld is shown at B? U figure. General. U. Not selected, but radio but. Selected. Not selected, double but radio but. Selected. EXPL button. Weld B is a double butt weld. Both sides of the material have been ground in a V and a bead is formed on both sides of the sheet. Reference, AMTSTRUC Chapter 2. Okay. Next. Question 80 of 95. Which of the following describe the effects of annealing steel and aluminum alloys? 1. Decrease in internal stress. 2. Softening of the metal. 3. Improved corrosion resistance. Not selected, 1, 2, radio button. Selected, EXPL. Steel and aluminum alloys may be annealed to decrease internal stresses and soften the metal. Annealing does not improve corrosion resistance. Okay. Next. Question 81 of 95. Which tool can be used to determine piston pin out of round wear? Not selected, micrometer caliper, rate. Selected, EXPL. Piston pin out of round can be measured with a vernier micrometer caliper. Measure each end of the pin in two directions at right angles to each other. The difference in the two readings is the amount the pin is out of round. Okay. Next. Question 82 of 95. Generally speaking, bolt grip lengths should be. Not selected, equal to the thickness of the material which is fastened together, plus approximately one diameter, radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected, one and one half times the thickness of the material which is fastened together, radio button. Selected. Not selected, equal to the thickness of the material which is fastened together. Selected. EXPL. 
Nut bolts for installation in an aircraft structure should be selected so that their grip length, the length of the unthreaded shank, is equal to the thickness of the material being joined. Okay. Next. Question 83 of 95. Refer to figure 44. Identify the weld caused by an excessive amount of acetylene. View figures button. View figure. Not selected. One radio button. Selected. Not selected. Three radio button. Selected. EXPL. The weld in view. The weld. The weld in view one was made too rapidly. The long and pointed appearance of the ripples was caused by an excessive amount of heat or by an oxidizing flame. If this weld were cross-sectioned, it would probably show gas pockets, porosity, and slag inclusions. The weld in view 2 has improper penetration and cold laps caused by insufficient heat. It appears rough and irregular and its edges are not feathered into the base metal. The weld in view 3 has been made with a flame that had an excess of acetylene. There are bumps along the center of the bead and craters at the edge of the weld. Cross checks are apparent where the body of the weld is sound. If this weld were cross sectioned, it would show pockets and porosity. The weld in view 4 has considerable variations in depth of penetration. It often has the appearance of a cold weld. Reference AMTG Chapter 7. Okay, button. Next. Question 84 of 95. Which statement regarding aircraft bolts is correct? Not selected, when tightening castellated nuts on drilled bolts, if the cotter pin holes do not line up, it is permissible to over-tighten the nut to permit alignment of the next slot with the cotter pin hole, radio button. Tap to toggle. Not selected, in general, bolt grip lengths should equal the material thickness, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. EXPL. Bolts for installation in an aircraft structure should be selected so that their grip length, the length of the unthreaded shank, is equal to the thickness of the material being joined. Okay. Next. Question 85 of 95. How many of these factors are considered essential knowledge for X-ray exposure? 1. Processing of the film. 2. Material thickness and density. 3. Exposure distance and angle. 4. Film characteristics. Not selected. 3. Radio button. Selected. EXP. The factors of radiographic exposure are so interdependent that it is necessary to consider all factors for any particular radiographic exposure. These factors include, but are not limited to, the following. 1. Material thickness and density. 2. Shape and size of the object. 3. Type of defect to be detected. 4. Characteristics of X-ray machine used. 5. The exposure distance. 6. The exposure angle. 7. Film characteristics. 8. Type of intensifying screen, if used. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 86 of 95. In performing a dye penetrant inspection, the developer. Not selected, thoroughly cleans the surface prior to inspection, radio button. Tap to toggle. Selected. Not selected, seeps into a surface crack to indicate the presence of a defect, radio button. Selected. Not selected, acts as a blotter to produce a visible indication, radio button. Selected. EXPL. To perform a dye penetrant inspection, the part to be inspected is thoroughly cleaned and soaked in a liquid penetrant which seeps into any cracks or defects that extend to the surface. After the part is soaked for the required dwell time, the penetrant is washed from the surface, and the surface is covered with a developer which, acting as a blotter, pulls the penetrant from the fault. The penetrant pulled out by the developer shows up as a visible indication. Right. Okay. Next. Question 87 of 95. Unless otherwise specified, torque values for tightening aircraft nuts and bolts relate to 
not selected, clean, dry threads, radio button. Selected. EXPL. The amount of torque used to screw a nut onto a bolt is critical in determining the integrity of a bolted joint. For torque to be uniform and to allow the torque specified by the manufacturer to be duplicated in the field, the following rule applies, unless it is specified otherwise, the values given in a torque chart relate to clean, dry threads. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 88 of 95. Which heat treating process of metal produces a hard, wear-resistant surface over a strong, tough core? Not selected, case hardening, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Case hardening is a heat treatment process for steel in which the surface is hardened to make it wear resistant, but the inside of the metal remains strong and tough. Annealing is a heat treatment process for either ferrous or non-ferrous metal that makes the metal softer. Tempering is a method of heat treatment in which some of the hardness is removed from a hardened metal. Removing some of the hardness makes the metal less brittle. R okay. Next. Question 89 of 95. What precision measuring tool is used for measuring crank pin and main bearing journals for out of round wear? Not selected, micrometer caliper, radi- Selected, EXPL. A vernier micrometer caliper is used to measure a crank pin and a main bearing journal for an out of round condition. Two measurements are made at right angles to each other. The difference between the two readings is the amount the shaft is out of round. Okay. Next. Question 90 of 95. What is descriptive of the annealing process of steel during and after it has been annealed? Not selected, slow cooling, low strength, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Annealing of steel is accomplished by heating the metal to just above the upper critical point, soaking at that temperature and cooling very slowly in the furnace. Annealing of steel produces a fine-grained, soft, ductile metal without internal stresses or strains. In the annealed state steel has its lowest strength. Reference, AMTG Chapter 7. Okay. Next. Question 91 of 95. Circular magnetization of a part can be used to detect which defects? Not selected, defects perpendicular to the concentric circles of magnetic force within the part, radio button. Ta selected. Not selected, defects perpendicular to the long axis of the part, radio button. Selected. Not selected, defects parallel to the long axis of the part, radio button. Selected. EXPL. A part magnetized circularly by the magnetizing current flowing lengthwise through it, will show up defects parallel to the long axis of the part. Okay. Next. Question 92 of 95. The core material of Alclad 20244 is... Not selected, commercially pure aluminum, and the surface material is heat treated aluminum alloy, radio button. Selected. Not selected, heat treated aluminum alloy, and the surface material is commercially pure aluminum, radio button. Selected. EXPL. Alclad 20244 is a type of sheet metal that has a core of 20244 solution heat treated aluminum alloy. Commercially pure aluminum is rolled onto the surfaces of the sheet for corrosion protection. The name Alclad is a registered trade name. R okay. Next. Question 93 of 95. Refer to figure 44. Select the illustration which depicts a cold weld. View fig. View figure. Not selected, 2, radio, selected, EXPL. The weld in view 2 is a cold weld. It has improper penetration and cold laps caused by insufficient heat. It appears rough and irregular and its edges are not feathered into the base metal. R okay. Next. Question 94 of 95. Refer to figure 45. What type weld is shown at A? View figures, but... View figures, navigate up. Not selected, but radio but Selected. EXPL. Weld A is a single butt weld. Weld B is a double butt weld. Weld C are both butt welds. Weld D is a rosette weld. 
Weld E is a fillet weld. Weld F is an edge weld. Welds G are lap welds. Reference, AMTSTRUC Chapter 2. Okay. Next. Question 95 of 95. If dye penetrant inspection indications are not sharp and clear, the most probable cause is that the part. not selected, was not thoroughly washed before the developer was applied, radio button. Selected. EXPL. After the penetrant has been on the surface of a part for the correct dwell time, the surface must be thoroughly washed to remove all traces of the penetrant. When the surface is clean and dry, the developer is sprayed or dusted on. Any penetrant left on the surface or in the pores of the material will stain the developer and faults will not show up as sharp and clear marks. Okay. More options, button. Exit quiz, enlist three items. Pause, button.